A common question I get asked frequently is, I'm this age and run this time. In one year, can I run this other significantly faster time? I'm sure every athlete has gone through this process at least once. In order to ensure proper development as a beginner athlete, there are a series of things you need to understand. Speed training doesn't come overnight. It takes consistency and discipline. And most importantly, you have to love the process. Speed training comes in many different forms. When referring to speed training, it's important to understand which type of energy system your body uses. When performing sprint training, your body uses its anaerobic energy system, which is when the body uses stored energy within the muscle in the form of ATP and glycogen to produce energy without oxygen. Intense, quick burst activities like sprinting or weightlifting use this energy system. During these intense activities, your body uses its type 2A and type 2B muscle fibers or fast twitch muscle fibers to perform these activities. Fast twitch muscle fibers are very powerful and contract quickly, but tire out quickly. Your body has different muscle fibers for different activities. There are type 1, type 2A, and type 2B. Type 1A muscle fibers use oxygen as their main form of energy and are smaller, less powerful, but can contract for very long periods. Distance runners and endurance athletes have a large amount of this muscle fiber. Fast twitch muscle fibers are separated into two groups, type 2A and type 2B. Let's start with type 2A. Type 2A muscle fibers are fast oxidative and use a mix of aerobic and anaerobic energy pathways for fuel. Type 2A muscle fibers are more fatigue resistant than type 2B muscle fibers. Type 2A muscle fibers aren't as powerful as type 2B, but are still significantly powerful and are important for sprinters. Type 2A muscle fibers are useful for events like the 400 meter and the final parts of the 200 meter. Now, type 2B muscle fibers are more powerful and more prominent in events like the 60 meter and 100 meter dash. These muscle fibers are extremely powerful and are fast glycolytic, meaning they primarily use stored energy within the muscle, not oxygen for fuel. These muscle fibers are used for the initial parts of the race. They are essential for a fast block start and high top speed. Your type 2A muscle fibers are very important for speed maintenance and also contribute somewhat to the initial parts of the race alongside your type 2B. Most people are born with an even balance of fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. Usually 45 to 55% slow twitch, 30 to 35% type 2A fast twitch and 10 to 20% type 2B. While muscle fiber type is mostly genetic, environmental factors like training and nutrition can affect the behavior of type 1A muscle fibers to act more like fast twitch muscle fibers. Now that the foundation has been placed, let's talk about how we can use training to target these muscle fiber types to develop them. Speed training for pure acceleration and top speed requires full rest and maximum intensity. This targets your type 2B muscle fibers, which are essential for a good start and top speed. An example speed workout can be 3 times 20 meter sprints, followed by 3 times 60 meter sprints, full recovery, about 1 minute per 10 meters ran. Speed training requires significant rest because remember, your fast twitch muscle fibers tire out quickly. And if you don't provide yourself with significant rest, you won't let these muscle fibers fully recover to allow proper training stimulus for adaptation. Short rest interval training has its benefits, but it's important to note that every form of training has a time and place. When it comes to speed training, it can be divided into different sections. Short acceleration, long acceleration, and top speed development. Short acceleration training consists of the initial part of the dry phase around 0 to 20 meters. In this phase of the race, your body is working hard to overcome inertia and produce force rapidly. At this point, it is important to have proper body positions so you can more effectively accelerate and transition into the top speed. Long acceleration training consists of 25 to 40 meters. In this part of the race, you are no longer low to the ground and are starting to transition into top speed, but aren't quite there yet. Training this will develop your 20 to 40 meter speed and help your transition as well. Top speed development involves running at a distance that is long enough for you to hit top speed but not start decelerating. For most sprinters, this is around 50 to 60 meters, but for more advanced sprinters, it can go all the way up to 60 to 80 meters in some cases. 
is a chart of the different types of speed training. Now let's talk about speed endurance training. Speed endurance training develops your type 2A muscle fibers, which are essential for speed maintenance in the 200, 400 meters, and a little bit of the 100 meters towards the end of the sprint. As a sprinter, it's important to develop your type 2A muscle fibers as well, not just your type 2B. Speed endurance training can be separated into different groups as well. Short speed endurance, long speed endurance, special endurance one, special endurance two, extensive tempo, and intensive tempo. Short speed endurance training are sprints performed at 60 to 120 meters with full recovery. Long speed endurance training are sprints performed at 120 meters to 150 meters. Both of these forms of speed endurance training are similar and are meant to be done at 95% or higher with full recovery. This form of training is great for the speed maintenance phase of the 100 meters. While doing short and long speed endurance training, it is essential to reach top speed and challenge your body to maintain that speed throughout the course of the rep. This form of training teaches your muscle fibers to maintain high force production beyond fatigue, creating new adaptations. Special endurance reps are performed at 150 to 300 meters and involve the same concept as short and long speed endurance. They are meant to challenge the muscle fibers to maintain high outputs even after fatigue onsets. These training distances are ran at 95 to 100% of your personal best and require 0.5 to 1.5 minutes of rest per second of activity. This form of training is important for sprinters looking to double in the 100 and 200 meters. Special Endurance 2 are distances between 300 and 600 meters and are typically used by 200 and 400 meter sprinters. These sprints are performed with full intent and the recovery times are usually between 12 and 20 minutes. These sprints teach the athlete to maintain good technique and to run through the line at the end of a 200 meter and 400 meter raced distance. 100 meter sprinters wouldn't really benefit too much from this form of endurance training. A form of training that was commonly used by Clyde Hart during Michael Johnson's 400 meter preparation was intensive tempo. While some coaches argue intensive tempo isn't fast enough as they are performed greater than 75% but less than 95%, intensive tempo runs are still fast enough to require the body to tap into the lactate energy system to maintain muscular contraction. Therefore, it can be very useful for making the body adapt to the lactate conditions that are required for longer races like the 400 meters or the 400 meter hurdles. It is important to note that because intensive tempo falls short of competitive conditions, it doesn't reinforce the mechanics used during competition, so it is vital to use intensive tempo alongside training modalities that are high intensity and fall between the 95 to 100 percent range. Example intensive tempo workout would be Kemmel's intensive tempo workout. Two sets of 4 by 220 meters at 75 to 94% intensity with 2 minutes of rest in between reps and 6 minutes of rest in between sets. Extensive tempo is basically a slower version of intensive tempo with the biggest difference being that the speed is so much slower than competition that it avoids excess buildup of lactate and hydrogen ions. While intensive tempo is painful because of the buildup of hydrogen ions, extensive tempo challenges the body through its aerobic nature. While some people might see extensive tempo as useless to improve sprint speed, there are still qualities that can be gained from it to improve you as an athlete overall. While extensive tempo might not make you faster directly, you're still developing elasticity through each stride which acts as a mini plyometric. Extensive tempo running is surprisingly very popular among a lot of sprint coaches even though it might seem of little benefit. This is because of its low effect on the CNS or central nervous system and its ability to improve circulation and tight muscles. It's commonly used as a form of active recovery. An example workout would be 10 times 100 meters with walk back recovery at 60 to 75%. Recovery has to be incomplete to challenge the aerobic system. Now, if you're someone that is getting into sprinting and are looking to start training, it's important to not do too much at the same time. As a beginner, you should primarily focus on good technique, learning how to perform drills and develop your general fitness to be able to support the demands of sprinting. If you are an untrained athlete, jumping into sprint training from the get-go can lead to injury. It's important to understand proper mechanics as well. 
so make sure to check out my how to improve your sprint form video above. As a beginner, I would focus more on general workouts like extensive tempo and bodyweight circuit training. Focus on developing the entire body through functional movements. In terms of pure speed training, I would primarily focus on early acceleration and progress to late acceleration and top speed as you progress in your training. This is a very general take and it's important to know what your background is in order to know what forms of training you can tolerate. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember to always strive to be better and stay planetary.